Now, today is a Thursday, and we discuss matters business right here on the Daily Brief. And joining me in studio today is Dr. Catherine Ngahu, the founder and chair of SBO. And we'll be discussing branding during um, COVID-19 and post-COVID-19. Good afternoon, Catherine. Good afternoon, Alan. Thank you very much uh, for joining us. Now, let's just get straight into it. When you're talking about business, we have uh, business being conducted, branding to particular being conducted on online platforms and you get young people, a lot of young people are conducting their businesses on the online platform where many people are expected to be there to actually reach them for the customers and all that. But you still find that not so many uh, young people are making profits despite doing uh, business online. So what then could be the issue in this particular case? Now, what's happening is that uh, because of the COVID-19 pandemic and uh, the kind of uncertainty that it has brought among many people and anxieties, even customers have tended to hold back in terms of how much they are spending at the moment. So many people are actually holding on to those who had income held a bit onto what they have. But the other thing is that many have lost livelihoods, they've lost their jobs, they've lost their incomes, meaning that it's difficult for them to be able to participate in buying everything they need. And again, Alan, I must tell you that the government told us to stay home and also to only focus on essential services. That tells you that uh, we were sort of people held back because they have been advised to live a minimalist life, spend only what you must because you don't know how long this pandemic was going to last. Okay, very well. Now, let's talk about um, something called um, business acumen. You see, yes. a lot of times you might have the branding intact, um, all the other aspects of business that you need to actually succeed. Every single one of those is intact. But there's also the question about the business acumen, which I believe not everybody has. And you find that many young people, especially coming from campuses, always want to be their own bosses. They want to start their own businesses. Could this be the issue as to why so many businesses are failing, that we don't necessarily have a lot of people with the business acumen? There is a question of business acumen, yeah. but I must say that historically, yes. the ability to start a business and grow it, or even for businesses to survive, has always been a challenge. That uh, a large number of businesses that are started, a large percentage of them actually do not see their second birthday. And so apart, when you take that, what causes that generally? First, what you're saying about business acumen is true, that many people do not have the training or the knowledge, or even the, uh, the interest to persist when things um, go wrong. Because one of the challenges in business is that it's not simple. And when you start with the expectation, as has been created by some people, that when you start a business, it will succeed immediately, you will get into the rough times, and then you struggle because you don't have the commitment, the persistent, because you didn't start with a really strong passion, and you don't have a strong drive for that area. You may be looked at what other people are doing and joined, but it's not the area that you are strong in or that you are passionate about or you have adequate knowledge about or skills. So I would say for you to succeed in business, you really need several things, but there are two very important things. You must have know-how and know-who. Where know-how means the knowledge, the technical knowledge or the idea about how that business happens and if you don't that, have that, you know where to get it. That you can bring in people who can do that. And know who, meaning you have the contacts or network of people who you need to make that business happen. Whether it's a customers or suppliers or other distributors, other resources that are required for that business to be able to take off. All right. Now, let's now switch gears and talk about uh, employer branding, which touches on the employer. See, a lot of people have lost their jobs of course owing to the pandemic and some people have actually placed those who've lost their jobs so you find that companies have the responsibility of maintaining their reputation in your research and experience over the past um, couple of years how much of a priority is employer branding especially when uh, looking at kenyan farms and what is the importance in general uh, em employer branding would be looked at in the context of corporate branding, yeah. uh, where you are looking at the branding of that corporate uh, as a way of building its reputation, 
building its um, you know attention and respect from the uh, the stakeholders that it values and the general public and uh, it's an important thing at this time uh, because we are looking at a time where everybody has been affected and if you look at many organizations have been uh, advertising showing the help that they have provided to their customers and also their employees and how they have been understanding and the like it's very important at this time because a, a brand must appear to be empathetic and human they must acknowledge that things have changed that everybody is facing challenges and be more understanding and this is a time when we are saying it's not even a time to look so much at how much you can make but how much you are able to sustain and uh, maintain your team and the people that you have so that you're able to continue in business and offer them support. And customers will also recognize this and actually they take that as a, some contribution and uh, I believe it will build your reputation and protect your business in future. Okay, now in terms of branding, we've already established that branding is a key and critical aspect of any business and it will forever remain to be so. But when you walk around town and different places, you find billboards are empty, um, there's not much advertising going on on Matatu platforms and all that. Does this therefore mean that business people have come up with new mechanisms to brand themselves? And if so, are there, what are these, some of these new mechanisms that you can mention, maybe one or two? Actually, what has happened is that during this period, yeah. because people were working from home, they were not on the roads. So if you, why would you be paying for a billboard during that time is what some people ask themselves. Yes. But the minute people came back, you needed to be back because people are passing through that and as they are driving along the roads, they are seeing the billboards and therefore it's better for you to be represented there. But because many people held back expenditure, many companies, even some of the companies we work for, have held back expenditure on even research and marketing because they, don't, they were also put in a situation where they are trying to be in a minimalist kind of mindset because the customers are also not able to buy as much since their income has been affected. But in reality, if you stop doing your brand building and your research, it means you won't even know how to continue with the people. When they come back, first the people will not come back the same way they were. So if you have lost touch with them, if you didn't retain the connection, you will have a challenge getting them exactly where you had them before this situation. Because where they have been, the experiences they've had, if you've not been talking to them, they have changed. And because this thing has gone on for six months now, you can imagine in six months that uh, psychologists tell us that that is enough time for you to change your habits. So if you've changed your habits, if you change the way you be believe, behave, the values you have for products and services, it means you are going to be a new customer. So if that company is not also doing some research. How do they understand this new customer? Where they have gone? How they are operating? What they value now? What they think matters? That is important and therefore they need to continue doing research and brand building to sustain their businesses at this time. Yes, now just to take us back to the issue of employer branding. Now we've seen companies lay off quite a number of people and in different ways some of them have been sent home well. Uh, some of them have been sent home in rather not so, uh, not such a good way, so to say. So one would argue that most of these Kenyan farms are not necessarily invested in that um, employer branding. So which therefore means that it might not be a key concern for them. What do you think is the status of these companies right now? It depends. Some yeah. companies are very, very concerned about that because the employer is one of the single most important person in your organization because that's your internal customer. That is the person who makes it possible for you to deliver to the outside. So for you to be able to serve all the external publics, whether it's your customers and your other stakeholders, you have to have first satisfied your internal customer. So I find that many organizations that are operating uh, without that focus, they have actually ignored that fact that without the internal customer being satisfied, they cannot satisfy the external customer. And that is why employer branding is very critical because it enables you to sustain that. But companies are different and that's why we do research because we do indexes that separate the top, the ones who are valuing something. So if it's employer branding, who are at the top 
and then there are also those who are at the bottom because they are not paying great attention to that. But again, I think during this time you'll understand that different businesses have faced different challenges. And so when they are not able to get any income, then they are not able to have money to pay to their staff. But uh, again, I've seen banks have been very uh, considerate. They are giving moratoriums, they are giving facilities that support businesses at this time. But government needs to come in also and do something to actually help businesses sustain themselves because that's the only way to protect jobs and ensure that we are able to continue having these uh, young people fully engaged All right. in the business of building the nation. Yes. Now, when you talk about these businesses, of course, COVID-19 has tested business brands to the extremes. Yes. And some may argue that things will get back to normal eventually. Some may argue that things will never get back um, to uh, the way they were previously. So what do you think? Do companies emerge stronger post-COVID-19 and get back to that point? Or we should just necessarily start getting used to a different kind of new normal? Uh, we've talked a lot about the new normal. Yeah. But uh, from a business perspective, I think it depends with the strengths you had even before COVID. Because if you were weak during that time and you did not have adequate strength, and your business was not well structured to survive uh, um, you know, this kind of crisis, then you might struggle before you get better. For a business that was already sitting pretty, then it has more leeway and will be able to adapt to the changing circumstances in a better position. So there is no equal. In fact, I had people talk about this thing saying that it equalizes. There is nothing like that. You can't equalize because we are not starting at the same point. So the different businesses will have different uh, opportunities. Some, in fact, benefited from the COVID itself because maybe in their business, COVID was there, presented an opportunity. Whether if you think about some businesses that had uh, you are in security, you are in certain industries where the business increased, or you are selling some of these COVID supplies, it depends with your business. Really, there is no single outcome for everybody. And again, also, how about your skills in adaptability? Are you good in adaptability? Do you have people in your team that are more adaptable? Are you open to change? That is going to determine how well you are able to wade through in the next phase. All right. Um, Dr. Catherine, I'm just being told I'm out of time, but just before we wrap this up, you have all the experience. You've been in this particular field for quite some time. Just give us your parting shot as we wind this up. Let me tell you my, what I would like to say at the end is that we have to be positive because I know we've been tested totally uh, during this COVID period, but we must be positive and believe that we will overcome. And as of now, because we've already flattened the curve in Kenya according to what the health experts are telling us, and that's why we've opened the business, we have to go back with confidence and do everything we can to change that which we can change so that we can build ourselves forward and Forget the past and move on to the future with the great expectations. All right, Dr. Catherine, thank you very much for creating time for us right here on this um, segment of the Daily Brief on Thursday where we discuss matters business. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It was a great pleasure. All right. That was Dr. Catherine Gahu, the founder and chair of SBO Chair, just speaking on matters pertaining to branding post COVID-19 and during this period that we are dealing with the pandemic.